Every sport has standout performers who seem to have been born with something special that sets them apart from the rest. In this video, we'll be analyzing these athletes to answer the question, were the best in the world made or born? When you look at the upbringing of the best in the world, you'll find that they all began training at a very young age and they received enormous investment from their parents. Tiger Woods' father, Earl, would place Tiger in a crib to watch him hit thousands of balls and he started giving him golf lessons when he was just a few months old. The Williams sisters, Serene and Venus, received disciplined coaching from their father. Steph Curry's father also had a major influence on both him and his brother. This is the same across all of the great athletes in the world. They all began playing at a very young age and had strong support from their family. Let's now explore the other side of the argument, genetics. The idea of a sports gene that determines an athlete's abilities is a myth. However, genetics may play a role in certain traits like temperament, focus, and how much enjoyment someone gets from an activity. For example, let's say there are two soccer players. They both have the same amount of influence from their parents, but one of them has better genetics for temperament and focus, and enjoys playing more than the other. Obviously, this player will improve faster. Lionel Messi likely benefited from this. Although Messi's family influenced his passion for soccer, it's unlikely that they influenced him much more than the average Argentinian parent does with their own child. Instead, Messi's superior genetics for temperament and focus likely contributed to him playing more, which resulted in faster improvement compared to the other kids. In addition to these factors, genetics for height, strength, and speed also play a role in many sports. Height is important in basketball. Anatomic dimensions are important in strength competitions. Fast twitch muscle fibers increase running speed. I could go on naming more factors, but it's easier to simplify it to a spectrum and give examples. In sports that require more thinking, genetics matter less for success. In sports where height, strength, and speed impact success, genetics are much more important. Sprint speed, for example, is largely genetic. There are outliers like Usain Bolt who have a higher proportion of fast twitch muscle fibers, proportionally longer legs than torso, and experience better training adaptations. Since their body is better designed for sprinting, the average person will not be able to out-sprint Usain Bolt no matter how they train. Long distance running and swimming also depend on body dimensions. In fact, the two sports have opposite ideals. What is good for swimming is bad for long distance running and vice versa. Successful swimmers, for example, have longer torsos than legs. This gives them more muscle surface area to generate power. Long distance runners are the opposite. They have shorter torsos and longer legs. A shorter torso means they have less weight to carry, which makes a big difference in long distance races. On the other side of the spectrum, there are sports where genetics are much less important, such as soccer and MMA. The two best soccer players in the world, for example, are quite different. One of them has a higher maximum sprint speed, vertical, and heading ability, and the other has better agility and motor skills. Each of them made the best use of the cards they were dealt to become exceptional. Usain Bolt is a prime example of how raw physical ability alone is not enough to guarantee success in professional soccer. Despite being the fastest man in the world, Bolt struggled to make a successful transition to soccer because he did not have good technical skills. His incredible speed was simply not enough to overcome the deficit in other crucial areas of the game. MMA athletes also come in all shapes and sizes. There are fighters like Conor McGregor who are fast and powerful, fighters like Nate Diaz who have unwavering endurance, and even fighters like Ben Askren who don't have the leanest body, yet they possess superhuman strength. There are wrestling gurus, striking specialists, and fighters who combine various skill sets extremely well. The presence of varying skill sets and body types at the highest level shows that success is attainable for average body types if they are willing to dedicate themselves to the proper training. Now that you've seen evidence for both sides of the genetics first environment argument, let's put everything together. Number one, the best in the world all started training at a very young age. Number two, the parents of the best in the world were closely involved and invested in the training process. Number three, genetics likely influence temperament, focus, and enjoyment, which leads some children to play more and therefore improve faster. Number four, genetics influence strength, speed, height, and more. Number five, genetics matter more in some sports than others, depending on how important physical traits like strength, speed, height, and anatomy are for success. These five points give a more complete picture of whether athletes are made or born. Let's now answer the question I made at the beginning. Are the best athletes made? or born. Drum roll please. 
The answer is that this is a stupid question, or at least it's not the question that we should be asking. The best athletes are obviously made. Each of them began their training as infants and had to devote their entire life to extreme training regimens. The better question we should be asking is this. Can a baby with average genetics become the best in the world if they began their training as early as possible and adhere to the best training possible? The answer to this is that it depends. I believe that this is possible in sports where cognitive skill is significantly more important for success than physical factors. In sports where physical factors play a key role in success, athletes with average genetics will fall short to the outliers with superior physical attributes. The best chance for success for average genetic athletes is in sports where cognitive skills are more important. The probability of success decreases as the importance of physical abilities increases. To maximize your chances of success, it's important to either choose a sport where you have a physical advantage or to choose one where physical attributes play a smaller role in determining success. That being said, reaching the college and professional level is possible for athletes with average genetics if they follow the best training and if they choose a sport where they're not at a significant physical disadvantage. Most of my viewers fall in the age range of 18 to 25. You guys can't change the past and you can't control the training you had as a child, but you can manage your habits and training routine going forward to maximize your chances of success. Also, even if you love a sport where you're at a physical disadvantage, it is still possible to reach a high level with dedicated training. Probably not the highest level, but a high level nonetheless. Regardless, sport is awesome and fun. And if you love a sport, make the best use of the cards you were dealt and enjoy the process of improvement. The videos on my channel will show you the best strategies to optimize your training and improve faster. See you in the next one.